Well, and welcome to my workshop. So today we're we'll taking this uh, Dodge Coronet. It's a 1/8 scale, and uh, I finished building the body. It has a uh, hood that pops up, and we're going to take this and make it look like a barn find. So we're we'll adding up tina and rust, and um, you know, trying to get this thing to make it look like it's a uh, old and just got pulled out of a barn. All right, let's get started. So as much as I really love the uh, finished, uh, very clean looks of these builds I do, um, you know, the, the customer really wanted this thing to be patinaed. And, and the main reason why is he has this actual car and he wanted all of the rust and the patina and everything that the paint looks like on his real one to match this, um, you know, this RC car. So, which I totally understand. So what I'm doing is taking the photos he's sent and doing my best to match all of the uh, rust spots first. So the first thing I'm laying down is this, uh, it's, it's like an iron paint, and so it's a really thick gray paint, but it, I think it's got iron particles basically um, in it. So I'm kind of get that lined up with uh, all his pictures and get those uh, painted up. So this paint is a two-part process. So the first part, like I said, is painting on this uh, thick gray paint. And once you let that dry, you come back with an activator. And it's a really like a watery blue color stuff. And essentially, you, you kind of paint that on and it um, just starts to, the rusting process. You know, if you just left this, eventually it would just rust on its own, um, as long as there was some moisture or something in the air. But this just speeds that process up. Um, so one of the nice things about it is that it's an actual, you know, natural process. It's not, you know, you're not, you're not painting this stuff on. So what you do is you do get the variegated colors of rust and you get the, you know, some areas are more, some are less, and it really does look a lot like the, uh, you know, the real deal. So what I have here are, um, it's called, they're Wilder brand, but it's Wilder weathering oils. Uh, so most oil paint takes, I mean, some of them can take weeks to dry, fully dry. Uh, the nice thing about this is they're a, a quicker drying oil paint, but because it's an oil paint, it gives you that longer working time. So the concept is you take a little fine brush and you put a small dot, and then you take a, a wide bristle brush with some thinner, and you just keep streaking that from top to bottom. So when you look at the actual car, you can see where the um, the badging on the the rear the rear quarter panel uh, has you know oxidized or some kind of an issue with the with the chrome, and it's just leaked down this you know whitish blue haze coming down from all the letters. And so as as that's what I'm trying to replicate here, as long as as well as um, some of the other chrome bits I saw that were kind of doing the same thing, the door lock and, and the run the windows and such. So a good way, even with a, uh, a body that is, um, you know, nice and shiny, is to do accents, uh, especially around these panel lines. So that Tamiya makes these really nice uh, panel line accent colors. And so I have black and brown, but they make white and, and you know, all kinds of other colors. But uh, so what I'm taking here is, is a combination of black and brown. And uh, just basically you, you dip this little new pen I have here in and you touch into the channel where the uh, the body line is and that stuff is so thin it actually wicks around and it, it, what it does it, it almost gives you that dark shadow effect and uh, really it really makes the uh, body lines stand out so i have my first pass of weathering done and you know there's still a lot more to go but you know, I think to me, weathering is is more like layering, and so you're just putting one layer on top of the other, 
uh, thinking through how the the process of nature would happen uh, for rusting and 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 uh, you know oxidizing d different aspects of whatever you're looking at, um, and then kind of working your way backwards up from the bottom up from the you know from the good paint job. So you know we started with you know a, a pretty good paint job, and now we're just adding details in. So on the back we're using these Wilder weathering oils. And it's an oil-based paint, but it doesn't take, you know, two or three weeks to dry like most oils would. And so what you end up doing is you take just a little dab and, and so I, you know, place it on, underneath the, the badges. And then you take a, uh, a thinner and a wide bristle brush and you just kind of drag that down. And so when you look at the real one, there is all this... Um, some kind of oxidation coming down from this this chrome badging in the back that's discolor the paint job and you can see it's just streaked all the way down so I'm trying to replicate that it's also affected this chrome here as well as you know around the uh, windows and such now I've also come in here with a um, it's a it's a sophisticated finishes um, rusting like I guess it's like an iron paint so you paint on this gray you know really kind of thick paint on it first and then you put an oxidizer on the top which then starts the rusting process now this is pretty good along with you know as far as the rusting goes but it, it as I found out after a couple more days it's going to get even better and better and better it's going to get um, you know varied in how much one spots rusted versus another and it's going to start to look more like the real thing but it's getting you know it's getting close now you know that rust is not the brown it's oranges reds a little bit of browns and and that i think that really you know comes through and how this is uh, set up when i put the rust on what i was doing was actually having detailed photos from the actual car and looking to see where the rust was and trying to match that exact I'm trying to get as close as possible so this is pretty much what the real one looks like uh, you know, a lot of rust at the bottom, at the bottom of the doors, you know, typical spaces, places you would see that. So, you know, I have a lot of this done and it's starting to look pretty good. I mean, the last thing I did here was uh, actually using a new tool and it's this um, little pen here. It's almost like one of those old timey, uh, you know, pens that you dip in the ink and write with. Except what I'm using is the, uh, the Panoline accent color. So I got the brown and the black. And so you dip this in and then you can kind of scratch it along the lines here and it just paints on a really nice layer. And because the way this stuff works, if you get it into one of these like grooves of cut, uh, as long as you can get a good amount, it just kind of wicks its way down, all the way down. Now these do come with a really fine brush in the top of here, but when you first put that in, it's, it's usually wider than what you need. And they usually get a little bit of a, um, you know of that brown or black on the outside and you got to either kind of wipe that off or and or if you don't then then you'll you'll definitely see where that brush went in so the nice thing about this is you can really get in there nice and, and easy and uh and work that in so it seemed to work out pretty well i'm going to use it some more but uh i think for now you know that's a that's a good thing uh, i think the next thing i want to get to is a um kind of a, a wash with a a white flat white and so the, the the car is really chalky and this one's still too shiny for what it what it is uh, you can see where the door is really chalky uh, the fender not so much you know and the different spots are, are more the paints chalkier than others so I think that's the next thing I'm gonna try to get to is get this paint dulled down a little bit and have that that old chalky look like the paint uh, you know is starting to uh, starting to go We'll give that a try and uh, see what we can get to. So another issue that the uh, paint had was a chalkiness, and I don't really know what causes it or, or what it was, you know, what the process is. But you, you, you know, you'll see it. It almost looks like somebody just literally just spread chalk all over the entire car, and so you can tell the car is blue underneath and had a really nice paint job at one time. But now it's just got this white haze over the whole thing. So what I did was essentially just take uh, a white paint and uh, thinned it out really well. And I'm just kind of, as you see, dabbing it on and using a uh, paper towel with uh, some thinner to spread that out a bit and to kind of uh, 
you know, where it gets a little bit too thick in spots to kind of get that um, knocked down. So here I'm using uh, the salt, uh, you know, patina trick, basically just taking a, a little bit different process with a clear coat over the top of the paint and then dripping the salt on. So this was probably the hardest thing to do is take a uh, solvent, essentially this is a clear PVC cleaner, which I use to glue the body. And I try my best to not get this on when I'm doing the paint job, but here I am putting it on purpose to uh, basically eat the paint away to represent a uh, spot that was damaged in the back. So kind of the final thing to do um, is come back with a, a wash. So I have a rust wash and kind of a, like an early uh, oily dirt wash. Um, it's kind of a darker brown black color. And so I'm just basically going around the bottom and giving it that you know road grime look as well as using the rust to kind of accentuate some of the uh, some of the rust that uh, may not be quite as as a uh, you know vibrant as what I'd like. So what I was told eventually uh, what he'll be doing is you know one of like the old hot rod tricks is taking uh, some type of a uh, a rub on finish it's almost I think it's like boiled linseed oil is what like sometimes what they'll use and basically giving it a shine to protect the patina so you don't so what I'm doing here is is basically masking off the window so I can you know emulate that but I'm gonna do it with a uh, you know a spray on clear coat Okay, so I finished up the, uh, I guess, whitewashing of this car. And, and the reason I did that is to give it that chalky look. Like you'll see a lot of paints that get that kind of white haze to this after they've been sitting out for a while. And so the, the real car really does have this really chalky look down the side of it. Um, eventually he's going to, uh, I believe, uh, you know, put some kind of protective over this, which will give it a little bit of a shine. So that's what I'm getting ready to do for the next step is I taped off the windows and I'm going to put a, uh, a clear coat over all of this which you know will give it a shine and kind of uniform look uh, even covering up the rust and everything but it'll uh, you'll still be able to see that that definitely that that patina underneath so uh, to, to do this I ended up just taking a white paint uh, a, just a little bit of a, of a light blue and I kind of mixed that together and made it really, really thin, washed it over, and then used a thinner to kind of drag this out, trying to mirror, you know, the look of the, uh, of the real car. Now, I did a little bit of touch up on the uh, rust, and I also added in, uh, the only paint bubble I saw on the car was right here. The rest was just uh, like little places where the uh, paint had broken loose, there was some surface rust, but this looked like there was some pretty good damage underneath. So what I did was put clear coat, painted clear coat on, uh, sprinkled some coarse salt down, uh, let that dry, uh, sprayed some of the body color into a little Dixie cup and dabbed that on and then did like a, a couple rust and a dirt, you know, washes over the top to kind of give it more of a uniform rusty look. And uh, I, I think it turned out pretty good. So it's uh, it definitely has that bubbled up paint look. Uh, I think that's about it you know like I said just some um, washes with a uh, rust and some like dirt um, wash around the uh, the bottom of this and um, you know added a little bit more into the uh, into the seams and, and around this edge just to give it a little more contrast and to kind of show some dirt so get this thing clear coat and I think that'll be pretty close to the end uh, I might do a couple other things we'll have to see what what it, how it looks like after it's clear coated all right, so let's get to that. So I, you know, I was, you know, taking my time to get these door handles because they were, 
I was a little bit uh, nervous about making them, but they ended up uh, coming out a lot better than I thought and, and, and didn't take as much time. I also have these turn signal indicators which go out on the, uh, the front of the, the fender. And uh, so what I did is I picked the Molotov Chrome, uh, you know, Chrome painted those with the airbrush, come back with the all clad clear coat on top to protect the Chrome. And so now I'm weathering down this Chrome to give it that, that you know, tarnished look. And so I'm basically going back with the uh, the Wilder Weathering Oils, the uh, one's like a light uh, cream color, I think it's called Buff, and the other one's uh, like a sky blue or something. So always a, a stressful time is taking a drill bit to a, uh, you know, a, a pretty much a completely finished car and then, you know, having to glue the part on, but yeah, this worked out okay. Okay, so I have all of the uh, final weathering done I'm going to do on this. Uh, as you see, I've added the final details of the little door handles and these little turn signal indicators. And basically what I did is just kind of mimicked some of the uh, the weathering I've, I've already done. I've added in some uh, white and blue uh, weathering oils and kind of uh, smeared that about to make the chrome look like it's uh, you know got some kind of oxidation going on it as well as adding in a little bit of uh, the Tamiya clear red to indicate the, uh, you know, where the, the lenses would be for the uh, turn signal indicators. So uh, I think I'm pretty happy with how this thing turned out. You know, the, the goal was to get the rust to look pretty close to what the, um, the actual car does. And I think, we, you know, we've pretty much done that. Uh, you know, this is just kind of a couple ideas around weathering. There's all kinds of different ways to do this, but you know, you just kind of, I think the most important thing to remember is to, um, you know, layer the things up. Uh, in, in the case of weathering, less is generally more. Uh, you go too heavy and just all rust. I mean, I guess those vehicles do exist, but most of the ones you find that you want to drive look like this. There's slight bits of rust here and there. Most of the body is in still good shape and most of the paint's still there. So I guess it's all on what you were looking for and um, just kind of go with it from that. Lots of uh, fun and interesting builds uh, coming up. Looking forward to getting to those. Until then, we'll see you on the rocks.